This video is a solution to the 1994 Part B Question 2, which is a kinetics problem. It starts out by giving us uh, this equation, 2NO, a gas, reacts with 2H2, a gas, forms N2, a gas, and 2 water, also a uh, gas. It says experiments are conducted to study the rate of reaction represented by the equation above. Initial concentration and rates are given in the table below. And they give four experiments with concentrations, initial concentrations of NO, NH2, and then the initial rate of formation of N2. And AI says to determine the order for each of the reactants, NO and H2, from the data given and show your reasoning. So I'm going to take two different approaches here for the two different reactants. Uh, one approach is much easier and simpler, but it doesn't always work. And the other approach will always work, but it's a little more difficult. So first of all, I want to find the order uh, with respect to hydrogen, let's say. So here's how I can do this. First of all, I know that the rate is going to be equal to K times concentration of NO raised to the something, I don't know what, I'm going to call it M, times concentration of H2 raised to the something, and I don't know what that is either, so I'm going to call it N. Now, one of the things that I can do is just make a kind of a, a general explanation for this by just looking at experiment number one and experiment number two. And I can just simply write that from experiment one to experiment two, a concentration of NO is constant, but concentration of H2 doubles. So I'm going to say goes up by 2. And rate also goes up by 2, because we see that the concentration of NO in both experiments is 0 0.006, and in the first experiment, it's 0.001. In the second, it's 0.002. And the rate doubles because it went from 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 up to 3.6 times 10 to the minus 4, which is a double. So because rate equals K times concentration of H2 raised to the N, K now includes NO raised to the m because that hasn't changed in these two experiments, we now know that it's completely dependent on what happened to the concentration of hydrogen. So therefore, we could say that n equals 1. Doubling concentration of hydrogen doubled the rate. Now to find the order of this reaction in NO, I'm going to take a more uh, kind of a rigorous approach, maybe you could say, that isn't really necessary in this particular instance but it will always work even if you don't have two experiments where one of the concentrations is the same. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to start out again with looking at the same rate law. So that will be the rate law for the reaction in general. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say for experiment number four, here is the rate law. We know that the rate is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter second, and that's equal to K, whatever K is, times the concentration of NO to the M. Well, the concentration of NO in experiment number four is 0 0.0020 moles per liter raised to the M power, and that's going to be multiplied by the concentration of H2 raised to the N power. In experiment number four, that's 0 0.0060, and that's raised to the N power. Now, if we look at experiment number three, I'm going to do this in a different color. Um, we can do the, write the same rate law, but now the numbers are different. So this is 0 0.30 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter second is equal to K, and it's going to be the same K because it's the same experiment, or the same reaction, uh, times concentration of NO to the M, which is 0 0.0010 molar to the M power times concentration of H2 to the N, and concentration of H2 is 0 0.0060 to the N power. Now here's where we can proceed. Even if 
it wasn't the same. Like here, it's 0 0.060 and 0 0.060. So it's, we could make the same explanation that we did in the the first part for uh, the H2 order. But even if it wasn't, even if this was like 0.15 and this was 0 0.060, this would still work. So we'll we'll solve this equation number three for k. So we'll say k is equal to 0 0.30 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter second divided by 0 0.0010 molar to the m times 0 0.0060 molar raised to the n power. And then we'll take this and we'll substitute what we've got here in for k from the number 4 experiment. So we substitute in for k. So let's do that. So I'll kind of keep these in their respective colors. So experiment number 4, substituting, it's 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter second equals k, but now we know what k is. It's 0 0.30 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter second divided by 0 0.0010 moles per liter times a uh, raised to the m times 0 0.0060 molar raised to the n power. So that's k, but in experiment number four, k is now multiplied by 0 0.0020 molar raised to the m power times 0 0.0060 molar, and that's raised to the n power. So now we'll divide both sides by this and kind of slide these two terms over and you'll see this get real simple real fast. So it's 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter second divided by 0 0.30 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter second. And that's equal to 0 0.0020 molar raised to the m times 0 0.0060 molar raised to the n divided by 0 0.0010 molar to the m times 0 0.0060 molar raised to the n. Now, what happens is, first of all, the units all drop out. We can just eliminate moles per liter second, and this is molar to the m, and this is molar to the n. They all cancel out. Another thing that happens is 0 0.0060 cancels out, because it's 0 0.0060 to the n over 0 0.0060 to the n. That's just one. Another thing that happens is if you take 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4 and actually divide it by 0 0.30 times 10 to the minus 4, you get um, 4. So we can have 4 over here. And 0 0.0020 divided by 0 0.0010, both raised to the m, just gives us with 2 raised to the m. So then you can say, well, 2 raised to the m equaling 4, m must be 2, so that we know that it's second order in NO. So that was part I. And then part II wants us to write the overall rate law for the reaction. Well, we know the overall rate law is rate equals K times concentration of NO raised to something. That was M, and we now know that that's uh, the second. Times concentration of H2 raised to N, and we now know that N is 1. So here's how this could have worked out, even if those weren't the same we would have already determined the order that was n, and we could just put it in there. So if it was first order, second order, zeroth order, it wouldn't matter. We could substitute in and find out our relationship between the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and it would always work out that we could find the order. So that was part i, i right there when we have the overall rate law. B asks us to calculate the rate constant, including units. So if we solve for rate constant using the equation that we just wrote down, k is equal to whatever the rate is, divided by concentration of NO quantity squared times concentration of H2. So we pick either one of the four experiments, it doesn't really matter which one we use, and just plug in numbers. So I'll use the first experiment, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter second. I'm sorry, this is moles per liter minute. I've been doing the unit wrong all this time. Divided by concentration of NO squared. The concentration of NO is 0 0.0060 moles per liter raised to the 2 squared 
times concentration of H2, which is 0 0.0010 moles per liter, and that's just raised to the 1 power. So what happens? Moles per liter drop out, and I have in the denominator moles squared over liters squared, so that means it's going to be liters squared over moles squared minutes. That's my unit. And then I'll have to actually calculate the value. And it works out to be 0.17. Part C. It says, uh, for experiment two, calculate the concentration of NO remaining when exactly one half the original amount of H2 had been consumed. A lot of students, probably when this was originally given, tried to do something with the integrated rate law be, or with half-life because they say they see that it's half of the original amount of H2 had been consumed. But you don't have to do that. It's actually a simple stoichiometry problem. So if you look at the initial concentration of H2 in experiment number two, it was initially 0 0.0020 and, and moles per liter. And if after half of that's been consumed, well, that means you have consumed 0 0.0010 mole per liter of H2. So if we consume 0 0.0010 moles of H2 per liter, and we know that the stoichiometry is 2 moles of H2 are consumed for every 2 moles of NO from the balanced chemical equation, well, that just tells us that 0 0.0010 moles of NO were consumed. The question is asking how much is left. We started out with 0 0.0060 moles per liter, and we have now consumed 0 0.0010 moles per liter, so what's left is 0 0.0050 moles per liter in NO. That's the amount that remains. Part D. Uh, gives us a sequence of elementary steps, and first of all, we're supposed to show that this um, mechanism is consistent with the observed rate law for the reaction and then the overall stoichiometry. So part I, we have to show that the rate law is consistent. So if we look at these steps, the first one is NO plus NO reaches dynamic equilibrium with N2O2. The second step is N2O2 reacting with H2 makes H2O plus N2O. And then the last step, the N2O that is created in step two, reacts with H2, and it produces N2 plus H2O. So one, two, and three. I'm saying that the rate determining step is two. And here's why. First of all, you can't do three until you've produced some N2O. So three can't be the rate determining step. And another thing that I notice is that this is in dynamic equilibrium. So even reaction one can't go forward until reaction two uses up some N2O2 and causes a Le Chatelier shift to the right. So this is your rate determining step. Now, how can we find out if this is consistent with the experimental rate law? Because we now know that the rate, because we solved this in the first part, rate is K times concentration of NO squared times concentration of H2. So that is the experimental rate law. We have to show that this mechanism, where this is the rate determining step, matches that. Well, since it's an elementary process, we know that the rate is equal to K times the reactant concentrations raised to their coefficients, so that'd be N2O2 raised to the 1 times H2 raised to the 1. That doesn't match this step as far as we can tell because there's no N2O2 in the overall reaction. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to reaction number 1 and we're going to do this trick that the AP chemistry people for some reason likes to be able to see people do. And here's what the trick is. It's a reversible reaction so we can make two rate laws. The forward rate is equal to K forward times concentration of NO squared, based because it's an elementary process. The coefficient is 2, really. And so that's our forward rate. And the reverse rate, well, that's equal to K reverse 
times the concentration of N2O2 to the 1 power, because it's coefficient of 1. But since it's in dynamic equilibrium, by definition of what that means, rate forward equals the rate reverse. So that means Kf times concentration of NO squared equals Kr times concentration of N2O2 to the 1 power. So if we took this concentration of N2O2 and solved for it, we could substitute it into the rate law for the rate determining step. So we'll do that. Concentration of N2O2 is Kf times concentration of NO squared divided by Kr. So now, if we substitute this, where we see concentration of N2O2 up here, we will get rate equals K, and now I'm substituting, Kf times concentration of NO squared over Kr. So I've substituted that in for N2O2 concentration because it's the same thing times concentration of H2, I now have my rate law in different terms. But K times Kf over Kr, that's just a different K. So I could rewrite this and I could say rate equals K primed maybe, which is a combination of K times Kf divided by Kr, times concentration of NO, quantity squared, times concentration of H2. And, well, that was the original experimental rate law up here, so we have just shown that it is consistent. The next thing we've got to do is show that the overall stoichiometry of the reaction is supported by this mechanism. And that's not too hard to do either. Let's go back up here, and I will do this in orange. What we're going to do is we're just going to add up the three steps. Well, what happens is N2O2 drops out, N2O drops out, and when we're done, we sum this up, we're going to get NO plus NO, so that's 2NO, plus H2 plus H2, so 2H2, goes to, we have N2 here, and H2 and another H2O, so uh, two H2Os. And that is the overall reaction, and so it is consistent both in stoichiometry, as we've shown here, and in rate law, as we've shown down here.